Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial guide. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about properties. So as a reminder, uh, within the past few episodes, we've been able to change properties of objects within the game with this properties window uh, right here on the right side. So if we were to select one of these parts that we have over here, let's say this one, then it's going to be highlighted on the workspace and it's also going to show the properties window down here that's going to show all the properties, configurations, and attributes that we can change uh, for this part so that the changes are reflected inside of the game so we can see it for ourselves. Uh, for example, if we change the brick color, so if I select this and I pick a random color from this color wheel right here, uh, let's say yellow, then it's going to reflect those changes onto the game. And it's also going to change the value of this property um, inside of the properties window. So this is something we can do while we are in studio using this properties panel. But what if I told you we can actually change these properties inside of a script while the game is running. So when we're changing these properties, we can only do them while we are inside of studio uh, before the game is actually running. But if we're doing this inside of a script, we can change these properties whenever we want to while the game is running. So that's the power of being able to use scripts to change properties within them while the game is running. So now that we understand that, well, actually, first of all, what I'm going to do is undo this change for the brick color that I did. And I'm just going to hit control Z. So that's basically going to undo my last previous change. And this is a shortcut I use a lot. Um, if you also prefer to, you can go on the top left and click these arrows that redoes your action and also undoes your action. So that's just a little quick thing I wanted to add there before we started scripting. So now let's add our own script. What we're going to do is go on the right side and we're going to click on our variables scripts that we created in the last episode and we're going to hit disable or we're going to uncheck the enabled property. And what we're going to do is click the plus sign next to workspace and we're going to search up a script and let's insert another script. Let's also rename the script. So I'm going to select this right click and hit rename to properties and then hit enter. Okay. So now that we have that, um, just like scroll in if you want to view it uh, more clearly, and I'm just going to select everything that's inside of here and then hit backspace. So here's the first thing we need to do. We need to be able to locate a specific object within the game that we want to um, change its property for. And this can be inside of the workspace, but it can also be inside of any of these other places within um, the game. But just for simplicity's sake, what we're going to be doing is essentially locating this huge part, this huge gray part that's called the base plate inside of the, the workspace. And we're going to change the properties of this base plate within our script. So what we need to do is actually locate this base plate within our script before we can change the properties of this base plate. And here's how we're going to do it. So I re remember how I showed you how this game is basically structured in this sort of hierarchy where we basically start with the game and then these folders all make up one game. And then we find whatever is contained within each folder to then locate the objects that we're looking for. So the way we do this is if we go back to our script, we first need to specify the game's data model that basically makes up the entire game itself. So in all lowercase, what we're going to do is type game and it's going to be highlighted in blue to let you know that this is the game data model. And the way we traverse or like go through this hierarchy is by separating each object with a period or a dot. And then what we're going to search up after this is the folder that we're looking for. So we're going to say workspace like this. And then if we want to locate even further, what we're going to do is put in a period and then we're going to look for our base plate, which is inside of the workspace. So we're going to say base plate just like this. So this is how we locate objects within the game. We specify the game data model and then we traverse through each object um, with a period so that we find the object that we're looking for. And then what we're going to do is get a property of base plate that we want to change. So if we were to go back into the game and select the base plate that's inside of the Explorer, we can now uh, select a property that we want to change inside of this um, base plate. So for instance, let's say we want to change the transparency. What we're going to do is go back to our script and we're going to um, add another period and we're going to say transparency like this. And if we want to set this to something different, we're going to um, say 
equals and then whatever value we want to have on the right side. So what we're going to put down here is probably a value that's not zero so we can actually see it. Let's put it at one. And this is basically how we change um, a property of an object within the game. So now if we go into the game, hit test and hit play, then what we should see within the game as soon as we join in is the base plate's transparency is now one. So it looks very clear compared to um, if we were to go back into studio because as soon as we joined into the game, this script fired and it made the changes uh, like we wanted to see within this base plate. So if we hit stop, then what's going to happen is we're just going to see that the base plate is back to normal again because this change only happens if the game is running. So that is basically how we change uh, one property of the uh, base plate. We can change another one by doing the exact same thing we did before. So if we drop a line and then uh, locate the base plate, so we can say game dot workspace dot base plate. And if we wanted to change the material instead, let's say uh, what we can do is say dot material equals and then we can um, and there's a lot of materials we can choose from. Um, if we basically go to this drop down that's over here on the right side and we hit the drop down, then there's a lot of materials we can choose from. We can select any one of these materials we want. So let's say we wanted to use brick. What we would do is in, in double quotations, since these are strings, um, or at least we can use strings to change this material, we're just going to um, put in double quotations and we're going to say brick, just like this. And we're also going to change the transparency to something different so that we can actually see uh, the base plates material. We're just going to set this equal to 0 0.25. So it's um, very easily noticeable, but not completely um, opaque. So if we go into the game and hit play, then we should see our new changes inside of the uh, base plate. And as you can see, it now has a brick material and it's um, it has a transparency of 0 0.25. So it's only a fourth of its uh, transparency um, versus opaqueness. I, I guess if you want to describe it like that. So that is how you change the properties within a an object uh, in the game. Now we can further um, make this more readable by adding a variable to the game's base plate. So what we can do is drop two lines at the uh, at the beginning of the script so that we can add a reference to the space plate. So what we're going to do is say local base plate. And once again, you can name this base plate or you can name this variable whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, equals game dot workspace dot base plate, just like this. And so now what we can do is replace these references to the base plate with just base plate like this. So I'm going to select um, each one of these references and I'm just going to replace it with base plate. And this should basically do the exact same thing. Uh, if we load it to the game and then look at the base plate, then yep, yeah, the, the changes have been reflected to our property changes that we made inside of the script. So I'm going to hit stop. And then finally, another data type we can change is let's say cast shadow, since this is a Boolean type. What we can do is say base plate dot cast shadow equals false because it, by default, it's set to true. Um, now, you can't really see the change that much inside of here with cast shadow because it would be effective if we were to see it on the bottom, but we're not really going to be seeing the bottom of that. So uh, there's no point in testing it, but this is another thing we can change here. So with that being said, that's basically going to be it for this episode with properties. What I want you to do for today's learning objective is to change more properties with the base plate, or you could use one of your parts that you created in previous episodes to uh, rename the part inside of uh, the Explorer and then make reference to that part so that you can uh, change the properties of that part within the game. And once you do that, I want you to take your code, go down to the comment section of this video, paste it so that other people can see what, um, you, what you've been doing with these challenges, if you're comfortable sharing it, of course, and that is basically gonna be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.